Hello Aquarius, welcome to the channel. This is Asnoitia here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of, of you may have been in a relationship, could have been a situationship. <clears throat> could simply be that there has been an exchange of glances and you know there's something there but no one's speaking up. Those hot and heavy, steamy glances sometimes people give to you when they're interested. <laughs> well, something here is really, really awkward. You got my awkwardness card here. Something is uh, awkward. There's a, there's a sense of an uncomfortable feeling. The environment itself has become a little uncomfortable. Right. Also, my way of reading, or rather channeling, is slightly different. I actually don't channel through any spirit guides. I never have. I do have the ability of getting whatever I need in terms of my answers from my higher intuitive self. And at the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel to provide you with some guidance in regards to whatever comes out today in these cards. So you do have one, two, three cards that are a little dark. Um, this is your person of interest. This is what they're feeling. But also, because of the type of intensity, especially with the betrayal card, the roles could be reversed, or maybe the both of you are going through this. But this is the energy that's coming up here. It's really strong. Betrayal is something that happened in this connection. Somebody behaved in a way that was um, not really what one expected. And so it could be a small betrayal, it could be a really big betrayal. Now, here we have mystery, followed by beauty. Then we have embracing the shadow, surrender, laughter, betrayal, creativity, illness, wellness, and then we have ecstasy. Under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Aquarius, I do feel that in this connection, you and I have a spiritual bond. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, it feels as if this bond just stays and follows me. I'm unable to break it. It is not possible. I question the universe and I question the heavens now. Why is it that you are in my life? Why now? Why not before? Why not years ago? Why not far into the future? There's something about you that feels very familiar. There's something about you that feels as though I've known you from before. And I feel at home when I'm with you, as if I have found myself, my comfortable spot. Everything about you feels very cozy. And you are very beautiful, not only on the outside, but on the inside as well. Everything about you I find your charm, your talents, your beauty, your charisma. You have a way of making me reflect and see who I truly am, what kind of a person I am, what kind of things I have done, what kind of effects they have on people. On the inside, I see you as somebody who's very strong and beautiful your personality and your character. 
But even though I find that you are someone who is just absolutely beautiful, it is very uncomfortable right now, the connection that we have, the interaction that we have. I know it's important for us to move on, but it's difficult for me to do so. I behaved in a way that was very unbecoming of me. You saw a side of me that was very aggressive, compulsive, and impulsive. You saw a side of me that I really didn't want you to see that was very dark. But now you have seen it, and I can't go back. Is it possible for you to embrace that shadow side? The reason I ask is because that is a part of me that makes me who I am now. I also feel that in this connection there is a sense of surrender. And even though things are very awkward between us right now and the environment is very uncomfortable, I feel the sense of surrender. I want to, I want to follow your lead. If you say something, I want to listen. I don't want to ignore it anymore. My heart, my mind, my body, it is all focused on you now. And I do feel that you are someone who I find a lot of cheerfulness with. There's a sense of laughter that I feel. You make my heart happy. You know how to make me laugh. I also feel that in this connection, there is a sense of betrayal. Everything that has happened, everything that I have done, It seems as if I was a stranger now, as if you never really knew me at all. There's a lack of truth, there's a lack of faithfulness. Everything about me, there was lies, there was inconsistency, and you saw through those lines. I was a fool to think that you wouldn't have found out but you saw things clearly. You can sense things before they even happen. And now that scares me. I do feel that in this connection there's a sense of creativity. I want to create something with you, something that'll be long-lasting for the world to see. Yet, There is a sense of illness and wellness in this connection. You have the power of making me ill and you have the power of making me well. Sometimes I am in a depressive state where I long to be with you and reach above the surface of this water but there are responsibilities, burdens, restrictions, constraints that are weighing me down below the surface of this water. I do feel that in this connection there is a sense of ecstasy. I do feel that in this relationship, this situationship, I have found something that has made my soul happy. Yes. I do feel that what has happened has truly opened my heart and it has made my soul happy.
All right. Aquarius. A lot is going on. This person does feel that there is this massive spiritual connection. You guys are definitely twin flame soulmates or karmic partners. You could be more, but these are the top three that I've found uh, throughout, throughout my past life readings. They are the most intense type of connections. So for some of you, this is really hurting, really hurting. And just to let you know, I do, I'm still, um, I still have openings for past life readings if some of you are interested in past life readings. That is to show what really happened in the past life between the both of you and why there's such an intense connection. This is for those of you that might feel you're obsessed with this person and you cannot let go of this person. And that doesn't mean just for months, it means for years. You've not been able to let go of this person. They're on your mind 24-7, morning, night, even in your dreams. It's ridiculous. It's just, it's, it's a lot for any human to handle, but it happens. It's a trigger. Um, for some of you, you might also want to have a look at my other channel, Asnoitia Audio, with this card, Mystery, which is this one. Um, I have one of my videos, which is called Past Life and Spiritual Connections. The other video is called Sensually Intense Spiritual Connections. For some of you that are interested in past life-related issues, or stuff or how that works definitely have a look at those videos and I, I'm only saying it because you actually got my past life card here now there's definitely a betrayal something happened here somebody here feels very like there's despair there's the feeling of desperation there's depression and there's various levels of depression but there's something restricting this person from being with you the way that even they would like to. They'd like to be with you, but they feel restricted. All right. Let's have a look at the Lover's Path Tarot. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Oh, boy. So, this is something that may have occurred in the first place that made this connection go downhill. So, what I look into is why did this occur? What happened in the first place that um, really started to turn this sweet connection into something sour? <clears throat> Traditionally, King of Cups and the Ace of Cups are absolutely beautiful cards. But we have here let's have a look the king okay all right what happened was this person was not learning from love relationships they should have been picking up on things the cues they decided that they were not really able to live up to one's dreams and the ideals that one had they started to realize that there was a lack of emotional maturity, wisdom, and integrity. This used to be somebody who symbolized these forces, but there was a lack of maturity, wisdom, and integrity. What they needed to do was stop fantasizing and finally get to work. This person, Aquarius, may have seemed inconsistent and unreliable at times. So essentially it comes to maturity. This person really was not as mature as you would have liked them to be. They were acting very immature. Even if something happened, they never really picked up on it. They never really learned from the lessons. And that is something they should have observed. Because, of course, you can only be better at something after you start to learn from it. Uh, this person didn't learn from this connection. Even if they had relationships in the past, they didn't learn from that either. So this is an issue because this does talk about how in this connection things could have changed. But this person deliberately didn't change. And they were being very inconsistent and they were being very unreliable. Here we also have Ace of Cups. So the Ace of Cups here, it does talk about 
how in the beginning there was this new cycle that was ripe for potential happiness and satisfaction, even joy. There was a feeling in the beginning that this was the start of an important love relationship or even a nurturing friendship. This talks about creative inspiration, having a visit by the muses, but, but things changed. When things started to go downhill, what happened? There was a rejection of others' affection, creative blocks, disillusionment with love, sadness or melancholy. So what happened here was because this person really wasn't able to understand the whole kind of philosophy of love, they were not able to learn that. They actually thought that it might not be real at all. And so here, they were rejecting your affection. They were creatively blocking the type of love that you wanted to share with them because they felt disillusionment. They didn't know what love was. And because of this, there was a sense of sadness and melancholy, which is so strange. Oh my goodness. What's weird about that is that they had love staring at them right in the face. They had love right in their hands, at the, in the palm of their hands, but they could not recognize that that is what love was. And even after they had it, they still felt sad that, oh, this is not love. Wow. How can you deal with someone like that? Oh my goodness. It, that That's just weird. <laughs> that's like, uh, I don't even know how to explain that. Even I, I did explain it, but this is an individual that refuses to see love even when it's staring at them right in the face it's like they're saying oh that's not love that's called this that's called that but it's anything but love which is very strange why this person is behaving this way part of it's because they're not mature they didn't really learn what love is all about and now when it's staring at them right in the face, they don't even know how to recognize it. And still they're pouting and they're being very inconsistent and unreliable. Oh, because that wasn't love. The only way, Aquarius, they will be able to see the difference is between you and another person. That is the only way they can see the difference. One day when they will be able to see the difference between your love and the way you behave and act versus this person's love versus somebody else's love. With the differences, that's when they will be able to tell yours versus someone else's. The only thing is, <clears throat> remember earlier with the King of Cups, there was a lack of um, lessons learned from love relationships. So the one thing this person needs to do, and it might take them a very long time, they need to start observing what type of relationships they're in and what kind of lessons they can learn. What kind of mistakes have they made? Some of these, some of the things this person has done, they might not even think they made any mistakes. They may be a little arrogant and stubborn. I'm getting the word stubborn. It's like, because they think what they know is best. The truth is they don't know that much. And that's what makes this situation a little bit complicated because they think they know a lot. They think they have the full picture, the full story, but they do not. Wow, that was deep. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. Let me know how that resonates. Was this person inconsistent? Were they unreliable? <coughs> All right, let's have a look here. I have my mic really close up, so guys, sorry. You won't know when I'm going to be clearing my throat. Oh, yikes. We have Eight of Swords. I don't really like seeing this card all the time, but it does, it is part of a message. 
This person feels really restricted. There's a lot of constraints and restrictions. It's like they feel a lack of freedom. Okay. So, let's just have a look here. Um, under the bottom of the deck, you have the devil card. Obsession. Sexual obsession. So, there's... This is such a weird combination. I've never had this before. We have here the star card. Then we have the Eight of Swords, the King of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune, and then we have the Devil. So the Star card talks about how this person feels spiritually. They have this faith. So they do have faith in this connection on a spiritual level. And what they feel is that someday, some way, we will meet again. And that's the same thing that this card means for me. Someday, some way, we will meet again. They feel that fate and destiny will bring the both of you guys together. Now, this is the star card where the lady here, she has a jug and the water is falling into what has turned into a pond. That pond is you. Now, on the other hand, literally on the other hand, there is a jug and she is pouring out the water. And now that water has streams, little streams that are coming out. Eventually what's going to happen is those streams end up flowing into the pond. And that pond is you. So this person really does feel that destiny and time is working on their side somehow. They have the faith that someday, some way, the both of you are going to be together. Even if you are worlds apart right now, they feel that someday you're going to be together and they feel that this is due to the fact that this is a spiritual connection. Now we also have here the Eight of Swords. This person definitely feels very bound. They feel very restricted. They feel like there's a lot of constraints here. They are blindfolded. They're, they can't see anything. They can't hear anything. Um, we also have here their hands and feet are tied. They're surrounded by swords. Somebody's watching them like a hawk. So all of these factors are playing into this, this connection right now. And somebody here does not have the freedom to be with you the way that, that, you, that you would like them to. And either they are telling you and you know this, or maybe you don't know this. They do not have the freedom to be with you. Now we also have here the King of Pentacles. Definitely this individual wants to give you a solid offer of something. They want to offer you love. And it is something that is, this person really wants to take care of you. They want to provide for you materialistically. It's a very good card to have, the King of Pentacles. Now we also have here the Wheel of Fortune. Once again, like I said, round and round we go. This person feels if they met you once, they can meet you again. If you were together once, you can be together again. <sighs> Arrogant in a way. However, it is also hopeful. It is also a lot of hope. One of the things this person has an issue with is the feelings that they have towards you. They feel an extremely strong sexual connection with you to the point where they obsess over your body and over fantasies and things that they want to do. It's inner turmoil. It's obsession. It's wanting to control you. It's very toxic. It's not healthy. And it could be that the reason why this person was not able to recognize love when it, when it was staring them right in the face is because their definition of love was different. Their definition of love is lust. But you will have to be the one who's going to teach them that lesson. Lust is not the key. 
There's passion, there's lust, and there needs to be love. Sure. But it can't just be lust. The overall arching theme here is lust in this deck right now. A lot of terrible addictions. And the main addiction is to have you. To have you all to themselves and just to be with you the way they want to. But it's not something that is full of love. It's only about the materialistic. It's only about them getting what they want and that's it. Not giving in return. Always just taking. And always hurting you. And always burning you. And then reusing you. Some of you might feel that. I feel it right now. All right. Even stinging you. The horned tail. Well, it's not a horned tail, is it? It's like a it's like a sting. The tail here. It's like a sting. So sharp words or certain behaviors that this person may have had may have really pierced you, really hurt you, like something sharp hurting you. Um, yeah, it is really important to note that this person probably looks at love differently than you do. They don't look at it as the same thing as, as you do. They can't. And the reason why they can't, it's because their entire experiences throughout their lifetime have been different than yours. That's why they can't see it like you. Everybody's different. Everybody has different experiences. So do I see this person reaching out right now? Nope. But I do see them having a lot of hope, a lot of intention. They just have a lot of growing to do. They can't be in this energy. It's a very toxic kind of energy. This is the energy that comes and goes. You don't want to be with a person in the devil energy because what happens... Did I say that? Do you, 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 you don't want to be with a person, if I didn't say that, sorry. Uh, you don't want to be with a person who's in the devil energy because it's all about the materialistic. And as soon as they find something else that intrigues them or that they find attractive they may just get sidetracked and they will divert their attention from you to that other person. That's typically what happens when somebody is like that, in that type of mindset. <coughs> so that part of love, or sorry, that part of lust necessarily doesn't equal love. Be assertive. Some of you have bent over backwards to be with this person. Sorry, I'm just going to do a quick prayer too. All right. The first card is the strongest we have here. Be assertive. So, be assertive here does talk about how in this connection there is this desire to talk, to be heard, and that didn't really happen before. There may have been talks, but this person really didn't want to listen. They would be there, but they're, they would be distracted. They wouldn't really listen when you had to tell them something. It didn't really mean anything to them. Which is why some of you might feel like they treated you like a piece of meat. You're not just a piece of meat. There's many, many parts to you that make you special, that make you adorable, that make you cute. And there's lots of people that you don't know that do love you. This type of love is not always the best kind of love. Whatever this person's doing, it's not good. Here we have, be assertive. It's important to note, and these are from Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, these messages. It's important to note that in a situation like this where you have the devil card, um, you might feel a little intimidated, or you may feel a lack of self-esteem. Because when this person pulls away, you feel that, oh, I'm not attractive enough anymore. 
The truth is, they find you attractive. Day and night, it doesn't matter. Years from now, they are still going to find you attractive. For the masculine energy, the feminine energy, if she stays the same, they often find her, 100% of the time I've seen, attractive. But if she has done something very bad, very negative, no longer will the masculine energy find her attractive. But I have to say, all of my readings, I've always found that even if it's years that have gone by, the masculine energy still finds that particular feminine energy very attractive, very beautiful. That attraction doesn't go away. So don't be worried if this person ignores you or if they're suddenly with someone else or they're suddenly staring at someone else. It doesn't mean that your value or your worth has gone down. So when it says here, be assertive, let them know what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. Understand that you need to put your foot down because you can no longer feel that you are just somebody who's just there just to support. You need to also have more self-esteem, more self-confidence if you have lost that. This person and their desire for you should not, basically I was, I was going to use a very technical word, but it should not um, validate or dictate who you are. Okay? So just because this person says something or thinks of something, in a way, with you, regarding you. It doesn't mean that what they say is who you are. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, we also have here, communicate clearly. So it does say be assertive, and then right after that it says communicate clearly. So definitely let them know what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with. Communicate clearly. Usually I say three to four points. Memorize those points. Don't text pages and pages because nobody has the time to read all of that and people get lost in the details. We do have here, yes, let go. Now, letting go is very difficult. This doesn't mean that you stop loving the person. It just means you physically, in the 3D, have to keep your distance from this person. And why is that? Because the more distance you keep, the more they will actually miss you. Because now you have given them an excuse and this void that it was filled before, but now it's gone. And once somebody's so used to it, they will start to notice that the energy that you had once is starting to decrease. And that makes them feel fear of losing you. But the fear can only come after they start to value you. And they can only value you once you show them your value by taking it away. That's the only way it works. Now, there's also this card here, get more information. This does mean that somehow in this connection, there has been a little bit of an issue where there's a lack of clarity regarding whatever has happened in this connection. There's some type of issue that occurred where the communication, I'm getting the words understanding, misunderstanding, misunderstood. So something happened here where this person actually has been misunderstood. And what's more important is for you to get the type of information to clarify whatever type of issue that you guys were facing. It's important to clarify and get information on that. Here we also have opportunity, abundance. Those are two amazing cards that just, wow, they're one right after the other. So yes, there will be an opportunity. The opportunity could be abundance. The opportunity will be given to you and you will receive abundance. Now, getting more information can also be from other people. You do have the card here, ask for help from others. So this does mean that in this connection, you could be receiving help from others based on the fact that you've asked them a question. Now, there are certain things that you may ask. There are certain pieces of information you may get. And just like it says here, get more information. 
you are going to be receiving information from others. Now, don't talk to everybody about your issue, just maybe two or three people that you trust that are very close to you. And express yourself to them, let them know what your problem is. And they may provide you with some form of information that will actually make sense to you in the long run. My dear Aquarius, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity, some guidance in your situation. This was really heavy, uh, these cards. It's, it's a huge thing right now. You're dealing with somebody who really didn't recognize you for your worth. I see that here. But you can only show them by letting go, like the card said. Let go of the individual for a while. Don't reach out to them. Don't send them any gifts. Don't send them any happy birthdays, any type of um, holiday or festival. Don't wish them anything. I know it's mean. I know. And I know you want to do it, but don't do it. Because that's the only way it's going to trigger something in this person. You want to trigger them. That's the only way to do it. If some of you are interested in a personal love reading, I still do have openings for um, my personal love readings, as well as earlier, as I mentioned, um, a past life reading, if some of you are interested. So the love reading right now is a written report reading, and there's still a little bit of wait time for it, but um, eventually I can get to you, and I'll be able to tell you exactly what your person feels towards you, and then you'll know what steps to take forward. All right, Aquarius, you all take care, stay safe. Bye now.